New York State Attorney General has now joined the Manhattan prosecutor's criminal investigation into Donald Trump's businesses. Tonight, the New York AG issued a statement that reads, quote, we have informed the Trump organization that our investigation into the organization is no longer purely civil in nature. We are now actively investigating the Trump organization in a criminal capacity, along with the Manhattan DA. New York State Attorney General, like other attorneys general, has a, a broader role than, say, a district attorney's office because they investigate civil matters, such as charities that are not uh, living up to their charitable status. They investigate all kinds of different consumer protection issues, they also are a law enforcement branch. So there could also be sharing of information between the Manhattan District Attorney's Office and the State Attorney General. That tells you there's a lot more man and woman power going into this investigation now, this criminal side, than previously thought. More man and woman power and more criminal vulnerabilities for Donald Trump. Hello, everybody. I'm David Schuster, and thanks for watching. It is rare for a state attorney general to join forces with a local prosecutor or district attorney. Until this point, the state investigation led by Letitia James was just a civil matter. The greatest danger facing Donald Trump was financial, a lawsuit like the kind Trump has faced before over his Trump University and charity. Those cost him money but did not threaten his liberty. However, clearly the state attorney general's office has found something in the Trump organization finances, charities, businesses, or testimony that appears criminal and spills into areas already under investigation by the Manhattan DA Cyrus Vance. And so, the two offices are now working together and sharing data. The notice about this development to the Trump Organization reportedly came in late April. Both probes have focused, among other things, on whether the Trump Organization downplayed property values for tax benefits while inflating asset values to obtain favorable bank loans. The state attorney general's office has already interviewed Eric Trump, as well as Trump Organization Chief Financial Officer Alan Weisselberg. Weisselberg is a target of Manhattan DA Cyrus Vance, who is trying to secure his cooperation against Trump. It's possible the notice of the two investigations merging is an effort to ratchet up the pressure on Weisselberg and other witnesses. It's also possible one of the witnesses interviewed by the attorney general's office lied under oath. And here's one other thing to consider. Although the New York Attorney General is best known for its civil enforcement work, it also has criminal enforcement authority over securities and financial fraud through a law known as the Martin Act. It is a century-old statute intended to protect investors from financial crimes. And the Martin Act is regarded as one of the toughest such statutes in the United States. Generally, it involves a civil investigation that morphs into a criminal one. Donald Trump, his family members, and their organization deny any wrongdoing. Still, there have been talks in Florida about whether the state governor, Ron DeSantis, a close Trump ally, might be able to use an obscure Florida law to block any New York indictments and extradition. Legal experts say that effort would only last a few hours. If the governor tries to protect Donald Trump from a prosecution, we don't have a formal prosecution yet of him, but if there is one, if the governor tries, it will be stopped in court every day of the week. In the meantime, the drama and dangers for Donald Trump in New York are building. The president has been officially warned. He faces even more criminal exposure than previously thought.